Good afternoon to you. It's Monday and I suppose it's the 29th of May. Uh, so that means one month has already gone uh, to the dust in the year of our Lord 2017. Uh, good day, Paul. How are you going? And um, you know what that means? We are now going straight into the sixth month, which means we are dead set on half of the year 2017. I'm really, really hoping that you've actually managed to achieve at least one of the things you put out on your resolutions and you've managed to at least achieve one of the goals that you meant to uh, reach out and get in the year of our Lord 2017. My name is Prosper Tarolinga, and if this is the first time you're tuning into our Lunch and Learn, welcome. Um, we're going to be going on an explosive 30 minute segment where we talk about how you market, scale, and grow your business so that you have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. Now, in my capacity as founder and CEO of um, Live Long Digital, we do come across a few clients here and there that really need um, their businesses marketed so they can reach out to their customers and I suppose with the reviews and the results that we've been getting we've been doing a tremendous job. Now today is one of those uh, days of the month where we do an overall cleanup of um, you know our strategy and see how far we're going to take our clients into the next month or what we've achieved for them. Now Robert says hi Prosper always happy to learn more from you. Great stuff hope you had a fantastic weekend or if you're still enjoying it hope um you know, you've got a good end to it. Now, like I was saying, um, we work with uh, coaches, consultants, and other small to medium businesses to help them market scale and grow their businesses. And half of the time, most of them, we do end up doing their Facebook ads and we do end up, uh, you know, really uh, making an overall strategy for them. Okay, so today we were, you know, looking at what worked in May and what actually should we do and continue doing in June, all right? And um, although I'm not a Facebook um, ads expert, I'm going to put it out there. I'm not an expert. I work with a team of people that actually know what they're doing. But I have an overall view of what's working in the market because my agency alone is putting in plus or minus 27,000 across um, all board with um, our clients, ourselves, into Facebook marketing. So I can maybe say a thing or two because maybe you're not putting in that much into Facebook. All right. So, you know, Facebook is a great advertising platform. And then there are a lot of elements in, in it. You know, some moving, some don't. And it's very... It's always important to always remember that you got to be alert. First of all, Facebook is now a business. When we, When it all started... You know, Facebook was free for all, but now you got to pay to play. Now you got to pay attention to what you're paying to and what sort of return you're getting from your adverts. All right. So you got to be alert and you got to learn more, um, you know, about all the recent changes that they're putting out there and just make sure you take advantage of them before your competition does. Because I know one thing for sure. Us people as marketers, we always ruin things, all right? Give a marketer email, they will spam people. Give um, a marketer Facebook ads, they will ruin it for everybody else. So you want to make sure that whatever you're learning or whatever you're practicing out there is something that you are constantly looking at to change, to reinvent, and also just not really sticking to one strategy, which is Facebook ads, okay? It has to be part of an overall strategy in order for you not to be frustrated, okay? So there's one thing that we've actually noticed um, that is uh, very uh, interesting. Uh, in the last months, April and May, there was Mother's Day, um, there was uh, Easter. So all of those prompted my customers to want to uh, do campaigns. Some of them wanted to do an Easter only campaign and some of them wanted to do maybe a Mother's Day campaign and there was also um, an, a holiday in between here in Australia that uh, um, I'm gonna uh, probably mention and see if it actually worked out. Now what we figured out this time around is the whole Facebook algorithm is built on a built on a bidding system that actually the price is determined 
um, usually by the impressions and half of those things are determined by what is happening at that particular time of the year. All right. So the price of an impression is, is based on, you know, multiple variable factors. So what worked last month may not be the same results that you get because last month would have been holidays. Last month would have been a need for people to advertise a whole lot more. So you know what that means? Facebook will put up their prices. OK, so the bid, um, you know, the more people are bidding for a specific target audience or a specific target, um, you know, time of the year, the more expensive the impressions become. So if you did anything last month and you're not getting your results, don't lose heart because they are putting up their prices depending on what, um, you know, is, is happening at that time. So this is why days like um, Christmas, Black Friday and other busy days usually have a higher cost per click. All right. So this is what I've also noticed because it was Easter and people were all wanting to advertise their wares and adverts were a little bit, a little bit expensive. OK, so don't let that dishearten you. Just look at what's happening during that month. Maybe it will be an expensive month because of what holiday is in place. This is not verbatim. This is what we've just realized, um, you know, judging from the you know, clients we've been dealing with. And we've noticed that Easter and Mother's Day campaigns were a little bit more expensive than average uh, campaigns. All right. So you should take note of that. Um, and I really, really encourage that you ask for expert advice when it comes to your Facebook ads. I wouldn't want to be sued just because I said something that's not, um, you know, um, you know, going to help you. And like I said, what worked today may not work tomorrow. So you got to be vigilant and also be on the lookout to see what's actually working for yourself there. OK, um, one other thing that we've also noticed is. Um, when you're doing your ads, Facebook now actually offers a click to chat ad option. All right. I don't know if you guys have noticed that they have been putting so much emphasis on messenger. So instead of you just putting out ads to get people to, um, you know, just jump on your offer or whatever clickety clack you're putting them through, it's, this is not something new. Okay. But certainly is one of the least used functions on Facebook. You can actually get people to click to chat to you so that you can instantly, you know, answer their questions. So a, a click to chat campaign can actually be really, really great for customer service. And also you actually start gaining the trust of your clients before they even start um, wanting to work with you. The reason why people are coming to the Internet, as we all know, guys, is to get information. Now, if you just do um, a, a click to chat campaign where people you can put up whatever offer you have and people can chat with you instantly, it actually makes them comfortable that you're going to be there for when they actually put their um, credit card. All right. So, you know, click to chat campaigns work very well with users who have actually maybe visited your website, you know, because they're now familiar with what you're offering and what service they might, um, you know, have or you, you might be offering and they might have questions before they commit to a purchase. All right. So there's a few plugins that you can use. One of them is from a company called Zota Box, Z-O-T-A-B-O-X. We've been using that within our business and it's it's working wonders. All right. So, you know, when people go onto your website or whatever you're offering or your landing page, they might not want to commit there and there. So make sure they have an ability to escape. All right. To escape, but not escaping your work, but escape into a Facebook chat environment. That way they're comfortable and they know that they are talking to a real person, etc., etc. I'm not thinking that the people that are watching this vi uh, video right now, you know, are multi-million dollar companies, because if you are, then you probably be listening to somebody else. But if you are not making more than 250,000, you have time for your customers. All right. So don't just put out an ad there and, you know, expect them to just because they've swiped right, they're just going to come and Netflix and chill with you. All right. Um, one other thing that we've also noticed guys is hey Sean, how's it going? Hopefully you have a, you had a fantastic weekend. We're talking Facebook ads and how, um, you know, may has taught us a few things that we did not quite realize were, were, um, you know, possible within, you know, the ad space. Now there's also this one thing when you're doing your ads, how Facebook asks you to put placements, 
um, you know, maybe mobile podio ads on, you know, their existing other channels, etc., etc. I would want to advise not to fall for that because these Facebook placements need different ad strategies on their own, all right? Because if you've got something that's maybe a video, I'm also going to talk about video um, as, as, as an ad because they don't work. I can prove it. We've tested them. Um, you know, all these different placements need different strategies, okay? Not a lot of people are looking at the right-hand column. Not a lot of people are going to, um, you know... You re react to the same way if you put your ad on Instagram and people have different phones and different screens on their phone so it's gonna be difficult if you put it on on their partner uh, website so you have to be sure that people are reading everything that you've put within your ad and the picture and people can view it view it nicely all right um, great stuff so obviously you know, Facebook right now is currently offering, um, you know, um, you, you, for you to go on to other ad platforms and they also encourage you to, to create different ad sets that advertise across multiple devi devices automatically. Don't fall for that, guys, all right? Um, whichever way you do it, different devices have different requirements and different customer behaviors. So... I also noticed that, hey, Peter, how's it going? I also noticed that people are advertising on baby apps, okay? You never know where your ads are going to go to. And the more you just, you know, some places are not relevant. So you want to make sure that these different ad strategies, you're, you're actually, um, you know, putting out your ads, uh, you know, with intention, not just putting out ads there. So I really, really recommend that you break down your campaigns and your ad sets and set them out by device so you can actually maximize performance. Because a landing page that is not mobile compatible, when it comes through a mobile device, it's horrible. Okay, and also um, a, a landing page that is um, is has got flash may not work on an Android device. So you really want to you know separate them because all these different um, you know um, ad platforms and ad sets they have different effects when people get to see them. Okay, and I don't know if people don't realize this at all, but a lot of text on your image. All right. A lot of text on your image influences the delivery of your ads. Uh, Jose says, following from Kenya, what's new with Facebook ads? Um, I'm not going to be the one talking about what's new. I'm just talking about what we just harvested in the month of May so that you can also see if you're doing the same with your ads. Okay. Um, we also noticed that some of our uh, photos had text on it. Even though Facebook opened up and said you can put more text uh, text on your on your ads the amount of text that you put on an image actually influences delivery because we split tested that and we were checking it out all right so the more text you have on an image the lower the delivery is going to be and facebook actually prefers posts with images which uh, w without i mean uh, facebook actually prefers posts without any images all right or virtually no text at all because they cannot police what is written on um, that but if it's um, you know normal text they can they're sure to um, know if the uh, ad is user friendly or not okay so if your ads do not have any text on them they're rewarded with a higher distribution and low cost per impression okay Simran how's it going hopefully um, this is a valuable uh, video for you we're talking about Facebook ads and how um, we discovered a few things during the month of May, how it is expensive depending on what holiday it is, and you you know whatever worked today does not normally work tomorrow. Okay, so um, go, going back to where I was now, Facebook is just currently classifying the image uh, to text ratio as maybe 20 percent, but I really advise that just don't. All right, because at the end of the day, they don't know what's written on that text, so they'd rather not have it out there so it will cost you a lot if your um, images have any text on there okay now once you've created an ad don't set and forget because i think a lot of us do that you have to always be um you know refreshing your ad creatives and making sure that they're constantly fresh all right this is what happens guys you should never you should never forget that 
When people come across your ads on Facebook, they have no intention to actually buy anything. I don't know if you realize that. People, when they're on Facebook, okay, they don't really care about your products. They don't really care about you. All they want to do is to check photos of their nieces, their nephews, and browse, you know, important, I mean, entertaining videos of cats. All right? So they just want to connect with their friends. So they do not, your prospects do not care about your ad. You have to make sure that they care. And that's the reason why a lot of people don't get the amount of results that they're thinking of. All right? Because your customer, while scrolling on Facebook, their headspace is far removed from, you know, shopping or looking at what's the best thing that could be happening with the, with, with, within your business, etc., etc. Okay? So you want to make sure that whenever you're taking people off of what they're scrolling, you're putting them towards maybe a blog or some sort of information that would help them. Nobody cares that your webinar is going to, you know, has got only three seats left. They're relaxing. They're on holiday or whatever it is that they're doing. So you want to make sure that whenever you put out ads out there, you are considerate that your client has probably seen this somewhere else from another person. All right. Because most Facebook campaign types, you know, they don't give you, you as the advertiser the control over how many times your ad is seen. You now then create what is called ad fatigue. All right. Clients are now tired of seeing the same ad from you. So you want to make sure you just constantly refresh them and renew them. OK, now this normally can um, when when somebody sees your stuff and they're not interested, they would then hide your ad. And once your ad is hidden, it affects the delivery of ads that are going to come in after that. So you want to make sure you're not causing stress to your potential, um, you know, uh, prospects. You're just constantly refreshing the ad and keeping it fresh. Okay. Sometimes, you know, when, when somebody sees something too much, they feel like they're being sold to, and it, it actually causes a lot of discomfort to your potential customers. Greg, how's it going? Hopefully you have had a great weekend. And it, it drives them away instead of, you know, making them into a potential purchase. All right. So, you know, Facebook is not going to tell you that we've shown this, this uh, ad maybe 55 times to the same person. All right. Because all they want from you is money. All right. So just make sure you constantly are refreshing your ads because we had a mistake with one of our um, kids uh, toys clients. And um, most of her ads, I think about six of um, her ads were disqualified and we forgot to actually check, you know, because we, 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 we thought everything was in place. So, yeah, that's, that's not cool, especially if you're running an agency that, you know, your client's ads have been suspended and nobody took notice. All right. So you want to make sure that when people constantly report your ads, you want to know why they're doing that so that you don't repeat the same mistake. All right. Now, once you've run your ads for more than a week or two, make sure you look at audience insights, guys, because these are a great source for when you want to retarget these people. Remember what I said, when you're bringing people out of their mood of being around their kids and watching uh, cat videos, just send them to a blog that's going to help them and then put a pixel on there. Right. Now, you then retarget the audience using audience, um, audience, um, what do you call it? Audience insights with, with all the conversion data that you would have harvested from that pixel. All right. Because this can be a great source of information for pretty much any campaign that might come your way. All right. Um, it also provides you additional ways to target those um, users depending on you know their behaviors or what they purchased or what piece of content they actually read it now tells you what that person is interested in and you're no longer spraying and praying with your marketing all right so you know it, it, it's really really helpful to not just put your ads out there but to actually care all right. You know, I always talk about this, guys. You really have to put a bit of oomph in everything that you're going to try in order to triumph. All right. So if you're just going to be putting ads out there and you're not really targeting them or you're not putting a pixel on there, it's not going to help you reach, um, you know, your campaign goals or you're not even going to have your own, you know, 
you know, better performance because you're just going to be frustrated. All right. I see a lot of people, they just put in $10 and they think that's it. Well, you're competing with people online that are throwing in maybe $5,000 a day. So you got to at least be, you know, forthcoming with what you're presenting to your audience. All right. Remember, when you're out there in the open, guys, if if Tony Robbins puts up an ad, Gary Vaynerchuk puts up an ad, um, you know, Grant Cadon puts up an ad and then your ad comes in, nobody would want to see the difference. All right. Nobody can, um, you know, they will always put you in the same sort of, um, you know, platform. So you want to make sure that your, 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 your content is fresh and you're just not spraying and praying with your with your marketing, guys. OK. All right. So as you can tell, I'm not really a Facebook ads expert and maybe this video might be a little bit off. But I just wanted to really talk about what we have discovered, um, you know, in the month of May that our clients have been going through. And mo the biggest thing that we've um, you know, figured out is when you're putting ads out there, what works today is not going to work tomorrow. OK. The reason being. You know, we just went through um, May and there was two holidays in between there. So Facebook, um, you know, charging and beating, they put it up because they know a lot of people are going to be using that. One of the things that we noticed, guys, if you're using ads uh, to generate maybe, um, what can I say? If you're using, um, you know, videos in your ads, you really got to be careful. The reason being videos are too engaging that your clients or your prospects will forget what you really want them to do. They'll just watch the video and then just comment on the ads. All right. They'll just comment in the comment threads. They're not going to go in and um, do as much. Um, what we notice is we have a lot of engagement on the videos, but not a lot of intake of what the ad actually wants. All right. So if the goal, um, you know, of a company is to just generate most of its business through video ads, guys, Facebook is not the way to go. This is what we've discovered. YouTube is much more better off if you're going to use video ads. OK, now the, 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 the reason is videos are great to communicate a message. All right. That's one thing for sure. But they aren't necessarily um, the best option when it comes to website clicks. Because once somebody already got the information, that's it for them. They, they're going to go on and go somewhere else. All right. So you want to bring them in to complete whatever the transaction is, either to leave their email address, et cetera, et cetera. OK, um, the reason why is videos. Videos are naturally so engaging, guys, and that, you know, their cost per impression that is needed to generate a click to a site using videos. It, 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 it might just go up, you know, due to people taking other social actions on the post instead of actually going to your website. All right. So they might just comment and like it and share without even interacting with the ad. So you want to be careful and see that within the video, you're not putting in all the information or you actually giving people a direct call to action to do something at the bottom uh, or wherever your button um, is for them to go on to the um, next step. OK, so even though guys, like I said, Facebook is a really, really great um, advertising platform and half of the time, guys, there are always many changing elements within it. So it's really important to actually be always alert, see what's working now. And if it's working, do more of it. If it's not, you know, figure out something else, because at the end of the day, when you then start complaining that Facebook ads are not working is because you're probably doing something wrong. For some people, it works. For some people, it won't. All right. It's just like going to the gym. Even if everyone else walks through that door at the gym, some people will come in having lost weight. Some people will come in with muscles, etc., etc. And if you don't gain the, the muscles or, you know, lose the weight that you wanted to do, it's not the fault of the gym, is it? All right. So you got to really make sure that what it is that you're putting out there, people actually want it. People are actually really, really need um, the stuff. That's why. That's why half the time I always pull out my um, my uh, blueprint here, OK, which will eventually be yours in not so distant future. 
You really got to figure out what people want. You really got to figure out what pain they're going through. And you really got to figure out what products they want so that they can, um, you know, alleviate this pain. And if you are providing this product or a service, it's a better off for you. All right. And then once you've done that, make sure you're engaging them with the real um, you know, content that educates them, inspires them, and you're actually providing a lot of value before you even go in to try and sell to them, okay? And when you start selling, guys, this is what happens. You're solving problems, not selling. You're actually just doing a few call to actions and all online marketing and measuring and tracking. This is where Facebook ads now comes in. And then pretty much after that, you're connecting with these people and you know, you're building relationships, leaving your authority there, you're branding your business and creating a community while you're also building, you know, uh, loyalty and ambassadors that really, really like your work and your services. So just type in blueprint and I'll send you through a copy of this blueprint or you can start our 30 day challenge so that you too can have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. I'd like to leave you with this guys. First impressions really matter, okay? No matter if you're going to do Facebook ads or just general marketing, all right? Don't release hard sell into the news feed or just target people who've never interacted with you before. This will frustrate your clients. This will frustrate you. And it will generally just be, you know, not a really good... Um, experience all right so if people haven't heard of you or even they haven't you know interacted with you what you got to do with your facebook ads is to just use it as a lead generation um tool all right because there's a lot of people on there already you don't need all of them all right what you just really gotta do your your sole aim as the um you know uh proprietor or your business person is to just identify that segment of your audience and then you can't expect somebody who's never heard of you or your company or your service to immediately, inv uh, you know, convert with, with, with your, your ad. Okay. So you want to put out engaging content first, and then you want to educate the people of what your service is capable of and provide value to them. Okay. And on all those pages, pixel it so that you can retarget them and now use value based advertising because these people have already heard about you they already know what it is that you're offering and it's a no-brainer for them to engage with your services all right robert says thank you for helpful content um we would love a copy of your blueprint not a problem robert i will definitely uh send it through to you i hope i didn't butcher this video facebook ads are not my strongest point the reason being I decided not to confuse myself. I just need to know the basics and then, you know, use that to help other people. Okay. Um, if you're going to be doing ads and if you really, really want to be successful, I know one thing for sure. Lead people to value based blog posts or provide a free video tutorial on your website and invite them to attend maybe a webinar or, you know, offer downloads that are really useful to what it is that they need. You know, things like cheat sheets, etc. Okay? Because, and also, if maybe you're playing in the e-commerce space, it's hard for you to give people free stuff. But you might also use video to build awareness of what your brand has to offer. Okay? Um, you know, competitions and, you know, setting up a few small, you know, um, engagement things before you send out ads would actually help, guys. You know, it, it, it actually bundles um, your, you know, it takes away the whole nervousness that a customer has because they can't just give you money if they don't know who it is that they're working with, all right? So, you know, you just want to make sure that your content that you're putting out there has a pixel and then you can retarget those people based on the content which they've chosen to interact with. OK, and then you can then guide them through up until they have a complete cell. All right. So if anyone has any questions or wants to know a little bit more, especially about how the blueprint works with any business. All right. Just type in blueprint and we can send it there. We get you the right kind of people. Tell you what sort of content to send them so that you can engage them, you educate them, and you can convert them. You know why? Because they already know, like, and trust you. And we all know that people like doing business with those that they know, like, and trust. We were just talking about Facebook ads, but Facebook ads are just a little component or 
a little part of your overall marketing strategy, all right? So don't let them be the be it and end all of your whole, um, you know, strategy. Um, at the end of the day, I hope you guys are going to have a fantastic week. This is one of the last days of the month. Make sure that whatever you've been doing last month, um, you, you're looking at it and measuring uh, what worked and what didn't work because what doesn't get measured does not grow, okay? I really hope that your business is going to grow. And if there's anything that I can do to facilitate that, don't hesitate to um, add the message or, um, you know, send us a, a, an email. In the meantime, enjoy the rest of your week, guys.